yeah, I'm excited to be in the semis, but of course, you know, never satisfied, so definitely want to go a step further or as far as I can. Um, I think, you know, I've I played some great players when I've lost in the semis, you know, it's, uh, you know, you don't win every single time, but, um, you know, I'm going to look forward to, to try play a little bit like I played today, you know, I thought I was pretty solid out there and, uh, you know, playing the right way on the grass, so that's uh, going to be a key. Now the four break points of 3 all, you played them all fearlessly. Um, obviously, you never think about playing them any other way but that, right? For sure. You know, I try not to even think about, you know, specifically what the score is. Um, I try to go out on each point and, and play the right way. Um, and, you know, when I when I try to go for it more, usually it works in my favor. So I'm going to always try to do that every single point. What sense do you have of the excitement in Canada, the following, and how does how do the messages get back to you about that excitement? Um, I mean, I don't have a huge sense of it because, you know, I'm across an ocean and in my own kind of bubble. You know, I'm not really reading anything or you know caring about too much about the outside, uh, you know, talk. But, um, you know, I just hope they're proud of me and, you know, when I go back home, I'll be excited to go back to Canada. But besides that, I'm just really focused on my job here. Princess Beatrice is at Wimbledon today. Mm -hmm. I wonder if you could tell us um, it's about your sister Beatrice and what her support means to you. So you're asking me about Princess Beatrice but not Kate and William? <laughs> <laughs> That can be my follow-up. Okay, <laughs> so I'll talk about them after. Princess Beatrice, well, um, she's my twin, and we are very opposite, but very close at the same time. It's uh, interesting because I think her, you know, normal university life, I think that's really cool because I don't do it, and she obviously thinks my job and what I do is um, insanely cool. So, um, you know, we keep in touch a lot, and we're very close, and, she, you know, she's a huge supporter of me, and... Um, same for me with her, you know, I, I get on her about her grades and things like that. <laughs> okay, so when you were obviously here today, what did you think about it? Yes, um, <clears throat> it was funny actually when we walked out at 5 to 1 of the members locker room, they, all these security guards rushed over to us and were like, nobody move, like, move your bags to the side, there's some royals coming through, and we were like, okay, you know, so we just were waiting, and then suddenly William and Kate, let Kate walk by to go onto center court, and I was like a little bit in awe. But um, so that was my royal sighting of the day. But it was funny because we actually walked to our court late because Kate and William had to use that hallway. So it's uh, it's funny how Wimbledon does it. <laughs> what do you like so much about England? Well, my favorite thing about England is Wimbledon. So. I'm always so excited to come back here, but um, you know it's it's the traditional tennis tournament. You know the it's so prestigious and so special. I think most players will agree with that. And um, you know it's just uh, it's like kind of like a magical two weeks here. So I hope I can stay a few more days. How would you feel about becoming English like Greg Rosetsky? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm not sure about that one. Are you fiercely patriotic? I am patriotic for sure, you know, whenever I play for my country I'm proud to and I haven't in a huge situation like the Olympics, I didn't play in London so I'm looking forward to, you know, hopefully represent my country in Rio in 2016. Can you take us through a little bit of um, how you're going to prepare for the semifinal and, and sort of the thought process that you're going to go through for that? Well we play back to back now so that's the first time that's happened this tournament. I'm just gonna, you know, rest for the rest of the day, and it's good, you know. I'm I'm always excited to play the next round, so I'm happy to play tomorrow, and uh, really want to just enjoy the moment as much as possible. You know, it's uh, not every day you can walk out on center court and play the semis of a slam, so that's the most important thing for me is to really enjoy it, and I'm gonna try, you know, give it my best, you know, leave everything on the court, and we'll see what happens. What is your your typical? Uh routine, the day of a match, what would you like to do and what is important for you? Um, well, the most important thing is getting, you know, a good hit in practice, so I'll always, um, you know, leave half an hour, 45 minutes for that. And then after, you know, getting some food in at the right time before my match, that's why, you know, during rain delays and things like that, it's always tough to, to judge when you should eat or not. Um, you know, luckily we haven't, we didn't have that problem today, so, um, you know, it was, it was good. 
to just uh, eat a bit, rest on the couch a little bit, and, and warm up. You know, it's uh, important for me to get really active and, and sweat a bit before the match. Um, Nick, of course, talks again and again about being in the moment. We know that. But, Jeannie, you've done something really incredible, the, the junior championships and then your rise in, in the WTA ranks, uh, now so close to an incredible title. Do you ever think to yourself, uh, this really is pretty special, this is a bit unreal, or, uh, pretty incredible? Just, just talk about that self-talk. Well, tennis is something I've played for 15 years now, and I've put in a lot of hard work on the court. So it's, um, you know, results that come for me, it's, you know, in the back of my mind, I expected them because I've put in so much time and effort. So, uh, you know, I have that true belief that, you know, I deserve these results when I get them. But at the same time, you know, I think what I do, I'm, I feel lucky, you know, to be able to travel the world and play tennis. And I truly love what I do. So I always try to enjoy it and take a moment to realize, you know, I have a, you know, a special life. And uh, besides that, you know, focus on the daily grind and just really you know, try to get better every single day because that's the most important thing. You won a tournament at 14, uh, but when did that belief, that, that sense that I'm going to be a champion, when did that kick in? Well, since I was young, I've always been self-confident. I think it's something I had naturally and also maybe, you know, um, I've always believed in myself and was determined to do as well as I could in anything I did, no matter what it was, whether it was my homework or my tennis practice. And, um, you know, I, I saw, I, I don't know. I mean, when I was nine, I decided to be a professional tennis player. So for me, that was professional tennis player is, you know, succeeding, you know, top 20, top 10. And, uh, you know, as I started playing more and more, I really had concrete dreams of winning a grand slam and, um, yeah, just going on. I, I, every time I, I play, I realize, okay, you know, I can play with this level and play with these top girls and, Playing my first full year on the pro, pro tour last year really showed me that as well. A quick question here: uh, There have been some improved statistics of, of play uh, from IBM this year. Have you used any of that in your preparation for the games? My coach has used them and doesn't go into you know every specific detail with me, but gives me kind of a, a general sense of some things going on, either with me or maybe the opponent I'm about to play. Um, so I think he actually really appreciates them and uses them. Eugene, you seem so cool on the court even when you've, you've dropped your serve. What makes you lose your cool either on or off the court? <laughs> What's, what gets you angry? Well, I'm a, a bit of an impatient person, so if I'm waiting for some family members for dinner <clears throat> or... Uh, just, yeah, if I have to wait for someone in general, I'm a little bit impatient, which is something I've been trying to work on. Um, besides that... Would that extend to the royal family if they're walking past you in the... <laughs> <laughs> I was okay to wait that time. <laughs> and I just watched in awe. Um, yeah, not too often, I don't think. You know, it's um, important to not, you know, don't sweat the small stuff and really just, uh, you know, take every moment, appreciate every moment. Would that impatience extend to waiting for players on the court? I know there's talk about sort of having a stop clock at the back of the court. Does that annoy you sort of waiting between points? Um, well, I don't think I'm, I'm the quickest person out there. So, you know, I don't mind too much um, the other player's pace. Today, Kerber, I thought she was going pretty fast. So I wouldn't have minded, you know, another five seconds. Uh, besides that, you know, I think, uh, you know, if the players obey the rules, that's enough. That's, that's definitely not too much time for sure. Um, you seem to love England and, and London. Have you been out at all in town since you've been here? Have you managed to do that? And I know like, you, you get the offer of theatre tickets and stuff like that. Have you been out and explored the place? Not too much, no. In tournaments, I'm really, you know, focused and I don't want to waste energy on anything and get distracted. My uh, mom and brother have gone visiting quite a bit, actually, and they went to Windsor Castle and the Parliament and all these things while I'm practicing or playing matches. I don't know. They might have missed my matches, <laughs> but um, I would. I, I have visited everything in the past. I've been to London many times, but really during a tournament, I, I don't do that at all. So maybe after the tournament or uh, 
you know, next year. I think it's it's something I do when I lose early, so I, I hope to not do it. <laughs> when, when you won the junior title a couple of years ago, can you imagine that you'd be back here again so close to, you know, the actual, the main title? Winning the junior title was still, I think to this day, you know, my proudest accomplishment in my career, and it really kind of propulsed me into the into the pro circuit. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm very, you know, proud of that. And I think, I mean, I played here last year and I, I won a match on center court and I made the third round. So, you know, even last year I, st I felt that I belonged. So I don't feel like it's a surprise that I'm, you know, even doing even better this year. But, um, you know, definitely happy to, to have some success at Wimbledon. I love this tournament. You've talked a couple of times now about trying to enjoy the tournament. When you walk out on the center court for a semi-final and maybe a final with God knows who in the Royal Box and, and the crowd full and the sun shining. Are you able to enjoy that moment at all or do you, is it 100% focused? Well, I haven't experienced that yet, so if I get the chance to, I'll let you know. But every time I've walked on court here, even my first match, I got to play on court one and that's why I played the junior final two years ago. And I definitely uh, enjoyed it and, and tried to you know soak in the moment a little bit. Of course, the match starts, and I really try to, you know, forget about it and focus on the match. But it's special being on these courts and, um, you know, feeling the support from the crowd. It's, uh, you know, it's a, a feeling you don't get anywhere else. Given your um, love or links with the royal family and seeming, seeming yes, we're like almost related. <laughs> <laughs> Is it an added added incentive being one game away from the final, potentially playing in front of the royal box, uh, maybe even getting presented with the trophy by a royal? You know, things like this are they extra bonuses, incentives for you? I, I definitely haven't thought that far ahead. Um, you know, I'm looking forward to tomorrow. I don't know, there might be someone watching there tomorrow already, but. Um, you know, it's it's cool this extra kind of aspect of Wimbledon where there are royals, and um, I think it, you know, for me it's it's just interesting to see who shows up and and things like that. But um, you know, for sure, if I can play in front of anyone, I'll I'll be super motivated. <laughs> we have time for two more questions, lady behind you. Uh, Eugenie, on the court, it's obviously pretty simple. You just go out there and try to win. But off the court, players usually have to make decisions about how much they want to be out there, how big they want to be. How do you sort of make those decisions, and who do you go to? to that? Sorry, I don't understand how... Just in terms of, you know, kind of endorsements and public appearances, things like that? Yeah, for sure. Especially, you know, when you have more success, you have more requests off court. And that's something I've had to deal with more this year. Um, my agent, of course, handles all of that, and I talk to him and, you know, my mom regularly about um, decisions on things. During a tournament, I don't really pay attention to any of that stuff, really, and more after tournaments or in training weeks, we really have more in-depth conversations about it because I really want to just try to stay focused in a tournament and not have distractions. Last question. Your yeah. question. You're playing Mahalak, and you played once before. That was at Indian Wells. Mm -hmm. Hardcore. You lost in three sets. What did you learn from that match, and what do you think about your chances tomorrow? We had a good match in Indian Wells, and I felt like I had chances, and was really close, and just you know lost that one. So um, I learned uh, you know a little bit about her game, and I think she she's playing really well, and I think she can change direction really well um, on the court. So I'm going to be ready for that, and. You know, really just try to go for it and, and take my chances and, you know, um, leave it all out on the court. It's the semis, so I'm going to expect, you know, the toughest match ever. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.